अज्ञानति विरंदस्य अज्ञानंजनस्लकय चक्षुरो मिलितं जनतस्मै शिकुरवे नमः बंदे राम शिगुरु बराम शिरु पनुगा प्रवरम ब्राचरासा रसिकं चानरायनं तम प्रपनम शिगुरु चारनं बंदे रामन प्रस्ताय भूतले रूपनुगा भक्तिरं चक्री पमुति नरायनम नमस्तम मनुमपि सचिपुत्रा मत्रा शरुपम रूपम तस्या ग्राजानु रूपुरि माधुरिम कोष्टवतिम राधा कुंडम गिरिवराम अहो राधिका मधवस्यम प्रप्तो यस्य प्रतितक्रिपायशी गुरुम तमनतोस्मिन हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो तीनवान दो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंता राधा कंता नमोस्तुते तप्तकंचना काऊरंगी राधे ब्रिंदावनेश्वरी ब्रिशा भानु सुते देवी प्राणमा मिहरि प्रिये गुरवे कोरे चंद्राय राधिकाय चराधये कृष्णाय कृष्णा भक्ताय तर भक्ताय नमः अनर्पिता चरिं चिरात करुने वचना कलो सामर पाजितुम उन्नतोच फलरा समसोभक्तुषम हारी पूरा तसुंदरी युति कदम बसन पिता सदाक्रीता ये कंधरे स्पूरा तु बास चिनंदना हाँ बंचो कदम पतरु व्यस्चा कृपा सिंधु व्यवचा पति तनं पवने बियो पाइश ना बे बियो नमो नमः First of all, I would like to offer my humble obeisances to the Lotus Feet of my Divine Spiritual Master, Nitya Lila Pravistuom Vishupat Paramahansa Padivraja Kacchari Ashtra Tarashatra Shishimad, Bhakti Viranta Narayan Goswami Guru Maharaj, and I pray for His causeless mercy. I would also like to offer my humble obeisances, millions of thanks to the Lotus Feet of all my Rupa Nuga Guru Bhargava, to all my spiritual guardians, to all the Vaishnavas from the past, from the present and the future, and I pray for their mercy. I would like to offer obeisances to all the devotees of the Lord, all the friends, Hare Krishna. So today is the most auspicious day. Today is the disappearance day of Parama Puja Pad, Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. So today I would like to, for my own purification, I would like to speak something of my memories with him. Parama Puja Pad, Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, we used to, he used to have his mat in Mayapur at the beginning of when we would get off the boat at the very beginning of the walking distance would be the mat of Parama Puja Pad, Bhakti Vyambharati Goswami Maharaj and his Guru Dev Parama Puja Pad, Bhakti Daita Madhava Goswami Maharaj and Parama Puja Pad, Bhakti Palavatita Goswami Maharaj. So Every year, Srila Gurudev would take us there to, for Parikrama. We would go there and we would stop. Parikrama would enter there and we would do Kirtan and they would come and sit with Gurudev. And he used to always sit in a bench at the back. There's a bench. And he would love to see. He said that he, he loved to sit there and see all the devotees coming and just shower them with mercy and bhakti. Really, this is his, his power. He, he was so powerful. He never accepted disciples until the very end of his life. So, when my Srila Gurudev left this world in 2010, December, the next year I prayed so much for Gurudev, like, where can I go? Where can I go? Please help me. Give me shelter. Who can give me shelter? And immediately, by his, by his mercy, Srila Gurudev inspired me to go to this place, Chandigarh, this Panchkuli. There was going to be a big assembly there of Harikatha. And I, and I, I saw the picture of Parama Puja Pad Bhakti Balavatita Goswami Maharaj. So I thought I was going to go see him. This is the person that I actually thought that I was going to go and see. But then, I, I was a little bit late. There was seven days of Harikata, but actually I couldn't go until the end. I called and I said I was going to go there. So 
they said, oh yes, we will pick you up. When are you coming? This and that. The disciples of those, at that mat, they have so much etiquette. It's unbelievable the way that they actually that they actually take care of the guests. It's like unbelievable. So when I arrived there, it was five days had already gone in the Harikata. And it was a very big temple, Gurabha, Gurabha, you know, like Sikh, very big temple in Panchkuli, in Chandigarh, India. So what I saw was that when I arrived on the fifth day, they welcomed me, they received me, they picked me up and they said, Maharaj has been asking for you. And I said, how can he ask for me? I don't even know him. He doesn't even know me. And they said that they had told him that a Western devotee was going to arrive. So he was asking every day, has she arrived? Is she going to come? Like this, very strange. So when I finally sat in the in the assembly at the very wall of the right side and even like minutes before Maharaj arrived there was so much so much uh, Bob present in the hearts of everyone just before even he was arriving just before even entering the place this is how powerful he was that he was given the mood of Radhika in everyone's heart just before he even arrived. So once he finally came in, he came and he sat in the stage. And then they told him, they said, like, there she is. And then he looked at me and I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. Like, why would he look at me? I'm nobody. I have nothing. I don't even really know him. But this is how their etiquette in this temple was that they were receiving the guests with so much honor and respect. It's amazing. I was so surprised. And he was speaking Harikata. I missed the five first days, but the last two days he was speaking about the different rasas that exist. So he was explaining about Jashodama, Batsalya Ras, how this rasa, when Udab came to visit, Brindavan. Then Jasoda Ma, she had stopped cooking. All the pots were upside down because nobody was cooking. He, she was not cooking. So much separation from Krishna. She says, why am I going to cook? If Krishna's not here. She, she was used to cooking to all the, the friends of Krishna. But now, what's the point if Krishna's not here? But this time she made some kheer. She cooked kheer for Udab. So this is how wonderful the kata that he was speaking. Very nice. Then after this, this I, and I was thinking, what is this beautiful harikata? How beautiful this harikata is. So then he left. And I heard harikata two days. The arrangements in that temple is unbelievable. They actually host you like, where do you want to stay? Do you want to stay in this house? Do you want to stay in this ashram? We'll take you. We'll drive you here and there. It's so amazing, really the real etiquette of a Vaishnav. Sometimes I traveled, for example, recently to some place and there's nobody even offers you to stay in their house. Like you have to look, where, where, where can I get a hotel? Where can I get an Airbnb? Because people don't host devotees. Uh, whereas in, in this Kodiyama, anybody who would come for the assembly or the program was hosted not only was hosted, it was fed. Please come and take prasadam three times a day, here and there. It's amazing. In the ashram, this devotee, he, would, he took me to the ashram and he, and he paid everything. This is all paid for, he said. This, this is the mat of Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. This is really the example of Vaishnav Seva. Anybody who would come to the program was taken care of. They were hosted and they were fed. Not like, how am I going? And they were they were picked up from wherever they came. I, I was picked up by car, and then when I was ready to leave in Panch Kuli Chandigarh, at this time Bhakti Parama Puja Pad Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, he didn't even have one follower. There was nobody following him. I didn't see Madhava Priya. 
the only person was uh, Sri Narottam Prabhu. He's his sevaka. He was always there with him. So in this way, we went out. Uh, I was ready to leave. I was going to leave the ashram at that moment. I was ready to leave the ashram. And at that moment came, knocked on the door at that moment, knocked on the door. This, uh, I can't remember his name, but he was the one that hosted me and, and, and was driving me here and there. And he said, I said, I'm going to Brindavan now, back to Brindavan. And he said, well, you know, Maharaj is going to the next place. He's going to Batinda. Batinda, there's a temple there. So if you want, I can take you. I can, I can drive you there. And I said, really? He said, yes, yes, you come. I'll take you. And I was like, okay, let's go. So then I got in the car, we went, we stopped on the midway, we had some lassi, we drank some lassi, we continued the journey, maybe it was like one hour, maybe two, I can't remember, and when we arrived there, the moment we arrived in the car, Maharaj arrived in the car at that moment, and I fell at his feet and gave pronouns, and so it was very beautiful in Bhatinda, this temple, I was completely alone with him, they weren't he, he, there weren't any followers there. There were only, the only sannyasi was Damodar Maharaj. Uh, Shripad Bhakti, I think his name is Kinkar, uh, Damodar Maharaj. Uh, he was there and Narottam Prabhu. And one very young Sevaka also, one boy, like 20 years old. So then at this place, what I observed of the etiquette of this uh, T temple, I think it's called Chichitanya Goryama, the name. So what I observed of Mangalarti, when any person will come to the temple, everybody would bow down to this person and give pranams. When a new person came in, everybody, every day, and every single person that would come from Mangalarti, everybody was giving pranams. They were all given amongst each other pronouns. But nowadays, nobody gives pronouns. Nobody. Like, you give pronouns to Guru, you give pronouns to Takurji, you give pronouns to, like, very high Vaishnava. But to the, amongst the devotees, I don't see this going on, this, like, giving pronouns amongst people daily, daily. So in this Gaudiamat, whenever anybody came, everybody was giving pranams, Haribol Prabhu, Haribol Didi, Haribol Prabhu, Haribol, Dandra Pranams, like this. Every single person that came to Mangalarti was given pranams. Very beautiful. So in this temple, they have a room of Bhakti Delta Madhava Goswami Maharaj. And they were all these pictures, very beautiful pictures. And I think the bed even, or the Biasasta, or the, like this. It's a special room for Bhakti Delta Madhava Goswami. And a special room where uh, where actually Paramapujapad Bhakti Balavatita Goswami Maharaj, his room, his actual room. So in this Batinda temple, which is very beautiful because it's a very tiny, very tiny temple with the with the towers like the Goryama towers, very nice in Chandi in in Batinda in Punjab. So there I stayed for a week, and Damodar Maharaj said, he said. Do you want to go and talk to him? I said, I can go and talk to him. I said, I said, he said, of course, you can go in and talk to him. I can go in his room, yeah. So every day I was going into his room, and he was speaking to me. One hour, I was alone. There, weren't, there, there wasn't any person. He didn't have any followers at all. I remember, like, the first time I entered, it was very, very hot outside. So when I came in, he said, are you feeling hot? And he said, and I said, a little bit. And then he said, Krishna Bhakti Ras. He said, when you have Krishna Bhakti Ras, you're never hot, never cold. <laughs> like this, very nice. The first thing he said when I entered his room. Then we were talking and then I, I, I said, you know, my Guru Dev left. So I started crying and crying. I said, my Guru Dev left. And, and, you know, I was weeping and weeping. And then he said, only a person that has relationship can actually cry from the separation of his beloved. So then he was saying, 
And I was telling him, you know, so what, what am I going to do? My Guru that left. And then he said, Guru is Nitya. And Seva is Nitya. So if you meditate and do Seva to Guru, he will immediately know and you will connect with him. Because Guru is Nitya, eternal, and Seva is Nitya, is eternal. So this is a very beautiful instruction that he gave to follow. And then I said, you know, my Srila Gurudev, he told me so many times, preach my mission around the world, preach my, preach my mission around the world, preach my mission. And he gave me malas. So he told me, you should distribute all over the world Harinam. This is my Gurudev's order. So I was telling him. So then he said to me, he said to me, he said, oh, yes, but you will not be successful. And I said, but Maharaj, this is, this is the order of my Gurudev. And I just want to please him. And he said, oh, but he is already pleased. And then he said this to me. He said, you know, Bhaktiviranta Swami Maharaj, Parama Puja Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, he, he, was, he told me, he said, you know, uh, uh, Bhaktiviranta Swami Maharaj. I said, yes, of course. He said, you know, when he went, he, he was trying to preach so much, but he was never successful. He was preaching and preaching and always failed, failed, failed. And, and he tried to make a magazine and he didn't even have one subscriber. It did not work. And he said, because in India, if you are married, people don't take seriously sadhus. Uh, but then he said, but when he went to West, completely surrendered to Krishna. Oh, at this time, Krishna completely empowered him. And he preached all over the world so successfully. So he was like telling me, unless you completely surrender to Krishna and are not dependent in other things, the mission, your preaching will not be successful. This is what he told me. But it's very funny because at the end, you know, after like five years after, before leaving this world, I, he, 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 he attracted me to go to Chandigarh. And at that moment, like this is the last months before leaving this world, he would tell me, he said, have you been preaching? And I said, no. And he said, why not? You're so qualified, you should preach. You know, and I'm thinking, like he was given blessing at the end. And he also, he was so powerful. He had this mystic power that that particular time he asked me again. This was in his room. But before, outside, he asked me, have you been preaching? And I said, well, not so much. And by his mystic power, immediately he inspired devotees to come and ask me, please come to my country, and they would give me the money for the ticket. Come to Hong Kong, come to Canada. Of course, I, I didn't go to Hong Kong, but uh, he arranged these things. He arranged this by his mystic power. So after I met him in, in Panchkuli, Chandigarh, then we went to Bhatinda, then we were in the train station. We were ready, ready to leave. I was going to back to Vrindavan, and he was going back to Puri. But I couldn't leave him. And I remember in, in Batinda, he had so much power, so much Shakti. I said, you know, Maharaj, I don't know how to be humble. My Guru Dev told me many times you should be humble. You should, but I don't even understand the meaning of this. And Maharaj would say, he said, oh, but humble is so easy. When you're in the association of Vaishnavas, this is so easy. Then another time I asked him also about, how can it be humble, Maharaj? And then he said, you know, it's every day practicing, a little bit, every day practicing. And then he gave me the example of stone. When the drop of water falls every day, every day, every day, then it, 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 it becomes a mark a whole. So in the same way, if every day practicing, 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 then you have like a samskara and you become, you have to practice every day to be humble, he was telling me. And then he said, Rome was not made in a day. <laughs> he told me like this. So in Batinda, 
he was so powerful. You know, the Vaishnavas, the power of Vaishnavas, that they, they have this seva briefi, this they give you the tendency to serve. And me, by nature, I'm very lazy. I don't like to clean. If I have to clean, I'm like, oh my God, I have to clean now. I don't even know how to sweep this and that. But when you're in the association of this Vaishnavas, because they're connected with Swarup Shakti, with Shimata Radhika, they're actually connected with the power of Radha and Krishna, especially the Shakti of Radha and Swarup Shakti. So they give this tendency to serve, which is so powerful. I remember I was like lifting up this super heavy rugs in this Batinda temple. They're plastic, and I would roll them and pick them in the middle of the class. Everybody was staring like, who is this like superwoman <laughs> carrying the, the, the very heavy rugs by myself and showering everything and with buckets cleaning the whole thing and the 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 the, 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 the drains everything i was so much energy this is the energy this is really we think manjari ba manjari ba but imagine the power the vaishnava has that they can give you this energy to do all these services sometimes people live in temples and they have no motivation they have no inspiration they cannot get up they don't want to hear harikatha this and that but when you live in when you are actually in the association of Vaishnavas, which have, which are Sita, which are perfected, they give Shakti energy. They give energy, spiritual energy, physical energy. That you can actually clean. You can wash. You can do everything. So much strength that otherwise you cannot do. You cannot do without them. So he was, and then I was remembering what he was telling me. He was actually telling me. He was telling me, oh, but it's so easy to be humble in the association of Vaishnavas. So in the association of Vaishnavas, then it's true. I was lifting up everything, cleaning. So wonderful. This is one week of wonderful association with Bharati Maharaj. And at the end, every day I would enter his room. He would speak Karikata, something he would speak. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Then when I was in the train station, I was ready to leave. They gave me a ticket to go with some sannyasis, which I don't really know who they were, I can't remember who they were, in another compartment. But I, I was sitting at his feet and I'm like, I can't leave you, I can't leave you. I couldn't separate from him. It, because you know, this is the power of Mahabhagavat. Mahabhagavats have so much prema in their heart that it's like a magnet. It attracts the souls. So I couldn't leave. I was sitting at his feet and I couldn't leave. And so then Damodar Maharaj said, well, actually we have an extra ticket here. You can come with us. So I actually traveled from Chandigarh to Mathura by train in the same compartment as Maharaj. He was uh, on the lower, we were four beds. I was at the top. And one very young boy, like 18 years old, in front. And down was Narottam Hesevaka and Damar Maharaj. And on the side booth was Maharaj. On the lower side booth uh, uh, was Srila Maharaj. Bhakti Bhikyam Bharati Goswami Maharaj. And then exactly at 3 in the morning, sharp, by his power, mystic power, he would wake me up. And I woke up at 3 in the morning. And then I looked down. And he was sitting in his bed. He was sitting, and from his pocket, he would take out his his watch, his clock, with a little chain that was tied into his pocket with a with a safety pin. So he took out the watch, the clock, and he looked at the time, three in the morning. That's when I saw the time, three in the morning. And he put it back, and then he starts Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, chanting all morning. So this is very beautiful. I couldn't believe how merciful he was with me. Then we arrived in Mathura. Very beautiful. Oh my God. This temple in Mathura, I mean, I'm sorry, not Mathura, Delhi, Delhi, in the temple of Delhi, Delhi. We're going to Delhi. And this temple in Delhi, he was staying there in his room, but it's like he had no followers. No one, no one was there. So then 
he was sitting and giving the class and I'm like, why is this chair so dirty? Why don't they, like, why don't they honor him more? So then I, I, I went to the market, I bought some cloths, I washed it, I, I washed it. I thought he's so pure that even I need to buy a new bucket for him <laughs> because his cloth cannot be washed in any bucket. So I remember I washed his cloth, the cloths, hanged it and made a beautiful chair clean with his with flowers and then he sat and he could see you know everything he understood then when he was given the class then we got to the ikarashi it was the ikarashi that it's uh, pandava ikarashi so he was saying that you know that we should try to follow nirjal ikarashi he actually said you know that really ikarashi means not taking water or not taking food. This is, the, this is real Dikarashi. But actually, if you're going to do all that and you're going to be weak, that's not the point. That the point of Ikarashi means you increase and do Kirtan all day if you can. Day and night, Kirtan. Harikata only increasing more and more activities of Krishna. This is real Ikarashi. But anyhow, you know Vaishnavas, they speak by mind. By mind. They're like telepathic. This is the real Vaishnavas and, and you will see that Vaishnavas always say that when people are very materially gross, then they cannot communicate with the subtleties of Vaishnavas. Uh, Vaishnavas are very subtle, and just by, by mood, by bhav, they can give instructions to the person. And you understand and you follow. But when people are very grossly, materially, even if they speak, do this, one time, two, three, they will not do so Vaishnavas communicate by, by mood. So we were in this temple and uh, in Delhi, Delhi Mat, and he was in the class. I, I remember he was like inspiring me. Sit in the front, sit in the front. He was by inspiration, come. But I was feeling embarrassed. No, I can't, I can't, because there are brahmacharis there and there's a sannyas. I cannot sit in the, go and sit in the front. I was feeling no, I can't, I can't. And then he said, he said, Guru and Vaishnavas gave us instructions. But the only reason why we don't follow them is because of our false ego. So immediately he was like saying, because of your false ego, what people will think if I sit in the front, you're, you're disrespecting my instruction. So this day, oh my God, it was so amazing the Shakti that he gave for Harinam. Mahaprabhu has defined who is a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is a person that just upon seeing that person, you cannot stop chanting Harinam, Harin, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 one lakh, two lakh, three lakh, four lakh, what is this? This is the definition of Vaishnava. And this is Maharaj. He was an Uttam Uttam Bahavad. He was such high level. I've not seen after Guru Dev. Really, this is the, even I remember when in Rup Sanatanguryama, whenever there was a, any, any assembly, whenever he would enter, Srila Gurudev would rise, he would like receive him, bring him, uh, honor him so much. Gurudev, so, so, so aware of that he was being received and honored properly because he was of such high level of Vaishnavas. Wow, he was amazing. He was the most extraordinary Vaishnava I have ever met after my Srila Gurudev. So in this, in this place, in the temple of Delhi, he gave so much mercy, so much Harinam, so much Harinam. That day, that day, uh, the, the Kadashi day. So then the next day, we were in his room. I was going every day to his room, I'm telling you. Nobody was there. Not one follower was there. So then what happened is that we were talking and I brought one devotee from, he was there in Delhi, so I brought him to see him and he says, oh, I never chant, I cannot chant, this and that. So he took up his mala and he said, this is not, this mala is not good because this, you should have the little beads and then it ends with the big beads and the eight the eight big beads, the first eight are the eight sakis. So then he asked him, how much did you chant? And he said, oh, no, I don't chant anything. 
And then I said, oh, I chanted, and I was going to say how much I chanted yesterday, and he got very angry, and he said, no, I don't. Like, you should never say, you should never say how much you chant. Like, if you chant a lakh or more, never. He was very angry. He said, no, you cannot say. Don't say. Like this. And then he said, let me see your mala. And then he took out my mala and looked at it. And actually, one time I gave him my mala in Delhi, but this was like years after. He was sick. And then I said, please chant on my mala. So he chanted in all my mala, the one that Srila Gurudev gave me. So I was blessed that day. So then Srila, Srila Maharaj, then he was like telling me, you know, about the chilak. And this is why today, which I never, because my Guru Dev wants always that we wear cholis down to here, cover our arms completely. But, but Bharati Maharaj, because of, because he inspired that we would always wear, that we should show the tilak. For, for me, he was inspiring me, show your tilak. So I was, I didn't even use tilak there. We, we would only use it here and here because in, in, in India, in Delhi, in the, you're so in a hurry always. You get up running to Mangalarti, running to do the seva, running to do that seva, running to go buy the vegetables, running to buy the paneer, running to, you know, do what, all the things you have to do all day. So there's no, no time to sit for 20 minutes and do the, the tilak. But Maharaj, he was inspiring me, you have to, you have to, you have to put tilak. Like I tell you, Vaishnavas don't need to talk. They say by inspiration. So then I was put in the tilak and bought even a t-shirt. <laughs> so then when I put the tilak, he would look and he was like, no. And then the next day I came and he was like, no, it, I wasn't putting it, putting it right. So then after the third day, he was wearing his utaria without, a, without the blouse underneath. So I could see his tilak. This is how merciful he was. So then I saw, oh, okay, it's like this, it's like this. So at that moment, by mood, by Bob, he said, he said, you should always wear tilak and Maya will never touch him. This is said by mood, by heart. But then when I went to visit him after in Calcutta, like, uh, this is like five months after, first I went to Puri, then I went to Chandigarh, but then after that in, in Calcutta, this was like, after Puri. I went there and I, went, I was in his room and he said, he directly with words, he told me, he said, he said, you should put tilak every day and then Maya can never touch you. And this time in, in Calcutta was very beautiful because I was alone again because no, he didn't have any followers at that time. Not even one, not even one. But he said, he said, very interesting. Because I was going to China, and then he said, but China, not very good food. What food did they eat in China? Not very good food. And I said, well, yes, you know, <laughs> they eat all kinds of animals. Because in China, that I preached so many places like, you know, Nanning and Changsha and Jiangming, Hangzhou, Beijing, all these cities that I used to go and preach. It's true, you know, sometimes, the food is not good, but the devotees are, that food of the devotees is very good. But you see that the Chinese in general, they eat really bad food. So anyway, he was telling me, what food did they eat? What food did they eat? Not good food. And then he said, and France not going? France not going? France? You should go to France. <laughs> he didn't say you should go to France. He said, he was saying, France not going? France not going? Like, but I mean, why would he ask me so much about France? Maybe he's indirectly telling me, you should go to France, I think. I don't know. He didn't directly say go. But he said, France, France. Then he said something very beautiful. He would always give me like little points for Siddhanta and Tata very, very beautifully. One was, for example, he said, he said, you know Krishna? You know Krishna? He is... And, and, and he gave me this because he knew that I was going to preach this everywhere in the world. He said, you know, Krishna, when he, when Brahma, he stole all the calves 
and all the cowboys and he hit them for one year uh, Krishna hit them I mean Brahma hit them and Krishna he manifested thousands of uh, millions of calves and millions of gopas and he became Vishnu he became when Brahma came down after one year and he saw he said where are the cowboys where are the calves he went to look for them and he saw those that he had hidden there and he saw another set of <laughs> cowherd boys and calves but in with Vishnu he could see that they were all Vishnu's so Bhakti Pragyan Keshaya Goswami Maharaj Guru Maharaj he said he said so you see Krishna must be the original fountain of Vishnu otherwise how can he manifest millions of Vishnu's if he's not the original source of all Vishnu's so this is a very beautiful point when you know practically all India says that Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu but in this way this is the way one can debate and say no Krishna Vishnu is an incarnation of Krishna because from Krishna emanated millions of Vishnu's therefore he must be the original source of all incarnations so this is a very beautiful thing then he he told me about one time he said you know uh, Radhika he said very beautiful okay something else okay he said uh, you know Radharani Radhika he said Krishna uh, all the gopis they left all the husbands and uh, mother-in-laws father-in-laws all their all their children they left everything Arya Patam they gave up all Dharma they gave up everything they left everyone to come and meet with Krishna and Paramapuja Parvati Amarati Usam Paramapuja Maharaj said but Krishna left them all to go and search for Radhika <laughs> so he was glorifying so Radhika is superior to all then he said about Radha he, he was telling me that Radha the, the the real name of God is not it's not fully in, in the highest degree if it's not like Radha and Krishna together they have to be together otherwise it's not complete and Krishna like he the name of Krishna which means the mo, the all attractive the one that attracts all the living entities all the world the universe he attracts with his beauty and his sweetness but that Krishna is not Krishna the most beautiful form of God and the most attractive if he's not with Radhika so he told me that very beautiful that time in Kakuta and also you know I had just bought so many Punjabi suits from from uh, Puri you know they have hand loom very beautiful hand loom so I, I I got made one two three four Punjabi suits orange and saffron very beautiful color for pre, for traveling with the pants and the shawl so when I came there and I was wearing my beautiful suit <laughs> then Maharaj looked at me and you know he knew that I wanted him to I was showing like look at my suits and he said oh you have suits now and I said he they call them suits so then I said yes do you like Maharaj and he said well for smartness it is okay because in India smart means like you know you're looking like good like smart smart like dress nicely smart so he said for smartness is okay but uh, he said but sakis only wear saris he said he told me sakis only wear saris and I said oh Maharaj so, so then I should not I should not wear uh, this and he said at the time of chanting your mantras he said you should always wear sari you should wear a dress he told me like this so today I wore the sari because usually I wear Punjabi suit most of the time so today I remembered and I put at the time of mantras he said you should wear the so anyway this is very nice then I went to China 
I went, I was preaching the whole month. Then I came back to, I think, Russia first and China. Then when I came to meet him, actually, when I met him first in Puri, this was before or after? No, this was, bef this was, this was after. First I went to, to China and all this. Then I went to Chandigarh to meet Maharaj. So I went to Chandigarh, eh, this temple that they have, very nice. And he was sitting there at the distance, and I came in. He was alone, again, no, no, they, there wasn't not one Western, one follower, no one. And he had no disciples, so. So only Narottam was there with him, Narottam Prabhu. So when I came in with my suitcases, with everything from China, I give pranams to Maharaj, and I was very happy to see him. Then I gave, I gave him the donations, like the, the, the donations that I have received from China, I gave to him. So then he said, oh, no Chinese, no Chinese money? <laughs> because I had changed it to rupees. But he was like, oh, no Chinese? Because he wanted to feel exactly like the, the, what the Chinese directly gave. But he's very powerful, so anything you would give to him, he would immediately, transcendentally offer. Transcendentally, he would offer to Shumati Radhika. Immediately. Anything you give to him, immediately, in one instant, he would transform it and offer it to that transcendental realm. This is the glory of giving donations to the Mahabhagavats. Because when you give donations to impious people, then the, all their bad karma, everything immediately comes to your heart. When you give uh, donations to people that are not that level, anyhow, some, some little bit comes to you, like reaction. But when you give to this type of personality, you know, which are nirgun, which are beyond the modes of material nature, what happens? They immediately offer to Shrimadharika, immediately, instantly, because they are always in that kunja, present, always. So they are immediately receiving this, transforming it, and giving it to Shrimadharika, instantly. This is the power of the Maha Bhagavats. So, and even, you know, I gave, and then I, I had some other donation for another Vaishnava, but he was looking like, and I said, I, I, I can't keep it, I'll have to give it to him. So then I gave to him, then I said, okay, this is for another Vaishnava, and I gave. And then he was like going to return, and I said, how am I going to take it back? So I said, no, 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 it's okay, you can keep. Then I was very chastised in my mat when I came back because I gave all the donations to Maharaj. And for days the Vaishnavas were chastising me. They were chastising me, look, Rakanti now she's giving the donations to Maharaj, she's giving them. She's not giving to the temple. Da, 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 da. They were like chastising me. Sannyasis were coming and chastising me because I gave all the donations to him. But it was actually for uh, for the printing of the Chaitanya Charitamrita book that he was ready to. It, it, I don't know if it ever got printed or not, but supposedly it was for that. So anyway, uh, there in Chandigarh, I spent one month with him. It was the most amazing time of my life. Well, always with Vaishnavas, it's amazing. So every day we would go in, like, the observance of Kartik Mass is in, in, in that temple, is that you are absorbing Ashikala Lila Svaram all day. So in the morning, you would sing like Mangalarti, before Mangalarti, then you will sing the song according to Govinda Lilamrita, what is happening at that time of the day. There's, there's, there's from Shikshastakam, the eight verses represent the eight yams or leelas of the day of Krishna. So the Ash Shikshastakam is eight verses were connected with the Ashtakala Lila and there's also some some kirtan especially for that so according to the day he would sing they would sing there's one brahmachari there my god he had so much mood my god whenever he would sing like oh i remember even the song deva bhavantam bande he wouldn't sing krishna deva 
Such beautiful mood. And I'm like, why don't they why don't they say Krishna Deva? He said, because the way that Rupa Goswami wrote it is Deva Babantam Bande. And one should sing the songs the way that they're written, not add, not adding. But anyhow, it's okay. We can sing Krishna Deva. But anyway, that's what he, you know, told. So in this place, it was really beautiful because that whole month, we were like doing the songs according to the day. Uh, Ashtakala Lila, you just absorbed in Ashtakala Lila all day. This is the beautiful mood of of um, Bhakti Vigyambarati Goswami Maharaj, of, of this mat, this mat, of Parama Puja Pad Bhakti Daita Mala Goswami Maharaj. This is, that's the way they observe Kartik, and also every night he was speaking about Gajendra, this Leela from Bhagavatam. So, it, by his mystic power, because I don't have power to get up in the morning ever or anything, but by the mystic power of the Vaishnavas, I was up at 2.30, and at three, I was in the sitting in the in the temple room, and then he would come exactly. And at three, you could see there's a man, very old man, who who walks like this, and he was sweeping the whole. It's a very big area, very very broad area, very big halls, and he was sweeping the whole area himself three in the morning and then amazing Vaishnavas you see them like very very humble people very very simple like nothing but internally they're all absorbed in Lila all absorbed in Lila now today everything's like ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho showing showing I am I am but when you see those type of Vaishnavas my god you're like this is, these are the real Vaishnavas <laughs> that are completely hidden, that don't even show it, that are always, no need to, to brag anything, always hiding, 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 because they have so much jewels in their heart, no need to show. So, so I would be there at four in the morning and, and, and prepare his chair and prepare his uh, microphone and everything for Maharaj to come and sit, and I was there waiting, and then Maharaj would come at four in the morning and would recite stuti, stavas, totras for approximately 30 minutes before Mangalarti or one hour. I don't know what time was Mangalarti, 4.30 or 5. But he would, he would be at 4 sharp, he was sitting there reciting so many beautiful verses. So then one time, jokingly, he said, he said, he told me, oh, you know, uh, I was always, for many, many years, I've always been the first one to ever be there at 4 in the morning. But now you have beat me. Now you come before. <laughs> he was joking with me, right? Because he was giving me the energy to, to get up and, and be there. So after that Mangalarti, then we went to uh, walking to... Every day we will go to different sectors, like sector, sector 1, sector 2, sector, sector 3, sector 4, sector 5. Every day, and every, in Chandigarh, in Punjab, India, every day, in Kartik. He didn't even have one follower, no one. It, not even one Western was there. And we would walk in these uh, neighborhoods, and he would, he would go in the car, and we were doing Sankirtan, because the real meaning of Sankirtan is, <coughs> Prabhupada Sarasat Thakur explains that Kirtan is when we sing with instruments and all this. Or it could also be without instruments, when you vibrate your lips and, and chant the names of God. But Sankirtan is when there's the presence of the Mahabhagavat there in front of you as you're doing Kirtan. This is the meaning of Sankirtan. So, we were doing this Sankirtan in Sector 1 every day, going to different ones. And the moods were so grave. Oh my God, it was just... I'm like, what is this mercy? You know, I prayed to Gurudev, and he sent me to him. 
I wasn't even thinking that it was him that I was going to see. I was actually thinking I would see Balabatito Maharaj because that was the person in the photo when I first went to meet him in Chandigarh, in Panchkuli. And, and, and it was him, you know. And then after that, immediately I would always go see him in Mathura when I was in Delhi with him. Then I went to Mathura and he went to Puri. I, I was crying for days and days and days, crying. When am I going to see him again? When am I going to see him again? When am I going to see him again? It's like so much separation. And the Vaishnavas were a little bit heavy with me, like, you're leaving Guru, you're going to him, this and that. I was feeling so confused because, you know, I was like a person in the mud that I was serving so much there. The, the devotee helping them, you know, they were helping me spiritually, but I was a little bit helping with a little bit of seva here and there. But they were like saying these things, and I was so heartbroken. I'm like, but I want to be with Maharaj. So when I went, after those months, I went and found him in, in Puri, and I said, I will bring hundreds to you, I told, to Maharaj. And every day, I was bringing... Every day I was bringing 10 people, Russians, Americans, this, that. I was bringing so many people, Chinese, every day in Puri. People, 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 people. And, and everybody would go crazy with him because he's giving bhakti to everyone. And he's got, that is extraordinary. So although I was living in Sri J. Sri Damodar Goryama in front of the ocean in, in Eka Chakra, where... Gurudev left this world and entered Nitalila in this temple. Although I was living there, I would come every day to his temple to hear Harikata every night. I think he would start at, I think it's 7 o'clock that he starts Harikata. From 7 to 8, I think, or 8 to 9. It was night. So every day I would hear Harikata, every day, every day for like one month that he was there. Although I didn't understand because it was in Hindi and there weren't any translators. So then the very last day, and I was like cleaning and doing services in the temple, whatever he inspired me to do. So then the last day, some devotees came. I think it was Madhava Priya and uh, Madhu Mangal Prabhu. They came and they were like carrying Maharaj, like walking with him to the room, like, you know, we're so close to him. And they entered the room with Maharaj and they kind of like closed the door, like I couldn't come in. But I was, I was with him for like so much time in Chandigarh. Then I was in Puri. I was the only one that assisted his classes for one month. So then, and they were like not letting me enter. Then he came, then he said, come in let her in so I went inside when I entered the room then uh, Maharaj was saying something in in I don't know what language Hindi or Bengali he was saying it and I didn't understand what he was saying and he said he was pointed at me and he was saying it so I was thinking what is he saying so then you know I asked him like what is he saying but they didn't tell me those two devotees, Madhava Priya and Madhumanga Prabhu. Madhava Priya Prabhu, Madhumanga Prabhu. They wouldn't say. So then, they didn't say. So then Maharaj said, I said, what, what, what do you say? So then Maharaj said, I'm telling them that this lady is very intelligent. <laughs> he said, because it is very hard to worship and serve Krishna but it's very easy to serve the Vaishnavas. And if you serve the Vaishnavas, then they will give you the service to Krishna. So I'm telling them that this lady is very intelligent. And then he said, because she comes every day to hear the classes. And then he said, she is, she is Bhakta. He told them. So then I felt like really embarrassed. I'm like, why is he saying this? But I think he was like, I think he was trying to make a point that nobody was coming to his classes for one month. And I was going every day, every day, every day, and I, I wasn't even understanding, but it's transcendental language. You know, Harikata is the language of trance. 
doesn't matter if you understand it's 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 a trans language when when the Bhai, Mahabhagavad speak Harikata, they're connecting you to that transcendental realm. That's the only, this is the real meaning of Harikata. This is Harikata, actually, Harikata. So then, after that, when I, he left, he left Chandigarh, I mean, um, Puri, he left. And I went back to my classes in my temple at 8 o'clock at night. You cannot imagine how much I was chastised. I was yelled, I was insulted, I was... I am leaving the Guru, I am going to the... It's better to leave, it's better to serve the dogs of the Guru than to serve the elephants. When I heard this, I was like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare, Hare Rama, and I would walk away, I'm like, what is this? You know, this thing about this institutionalized mentality that broke my heart. Just Gurudev, not even one year had gone that Gurudev left this world and I was already subjected to all this. So I was very sad in my heart, what to do, where to go, this and that. So anyway, I would always go in the association of Maharaj and I remember, you know, I was completely my heart with Maharaj, really. He was helping me so much. So one time in Chandigarh, I told him, I told Maharaj in Chandigarh, I said, Maharaj, eh, I said, because this time was going to come for a couple of days, Muni Maharaj, Bhakti Anta Muni Maharaj, was going to arrive there. So I said, oh, you know, he sings very beautiful kirtan. He, da he sang, for example, Gita Govinda. And he said, oh, no, 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 this is not good. Like this very high thing should not be spoken and I said well why this why then the Sukha Deva Goswami say Bikridi Bikridi Damcha Vishnu Sadambitaha Nushinayat Al Tavari Bhakti Param Bhagavati Bhakti Param Bhagavati Pratilatam Tamang Hritrogam Ashpa Chino Achina Nera Dhira I'm forgetting so I said this verse I said why Sukha Deva Goswami in Bhagavatam has said a person which continuously listens to the Lilakata of the of the Krishna with the gopis, the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna, and continuously listens with faith and then repeats him to others, then Bhakti Param Bhagavati, the highest type of bhakti, will come in the heart first. And by this bhakti, all the disease of the heart which is lost immediately goes away so why did Sukha Deva Goswami gave this blessing so why should we not follow this so then he said he told me because I told him I only want Rasalila I told him this I only want Rasalila <laughs> and then he said he said Krishna Bhakti Ras Bhavita Mati he, he, he told me this verse that says that a person, you cannot attain Krishna Bhakti Ras by accumulation of Sukriti, of pious activities from millions of millions of births. You cannot attain Krishna Bhakti Ras by this. The only way is by an intense lolium lova, greed, hankering to attain by this you can attain Krishna Bhakti Das. And anywhere you see that they have this, this Krishna Bhakti Das is available, then you should at once go and try to purchase it. No matter how, you should go and try to get this Krishna Bhakti Das immediately. However, whatever you have to do. So then Maharaj gave the verse, you know, Krishna Bhakti Ras Bhavita, you know, and I said, yes, I know. So then he said, when Sanatana Goswami, he told me, when Sanatana Goswami was in the jail and he wanted to escape, but he was showing the coins, he said, he was showing the coin, no, he wasn't, he didn't say that, he said, he was offering the coins to the to the gatekeeper. He said, I have so many coins, I think it's 6,000, no? 
I have 6,000 coins or 7,000, I can't remember. Maharaj said, he was telling the, the gatekeeper, let me free, let me go. I have so many thousands of coins I can give you. But Maharaj said, but the gatekeeper was not willing to do it because he was afraid that he would be chastised by the king. He wouldn't do it. He was hesitating. But when he showed him finally the coins, Maharaj said, at that, mo at that moment when he saw, then so much greed came and he let him go. So he told me this referring to, unless you have a little darshan of that transcendental realm, of this ras, this prem ras, then the greed to want it will not appear in your heart. So one has greed for bhakti ras or prem ras only if you had one little drop of taste for this. So this is very nice. Then we were observing the whole Kartik Mas, very beautiful, like I said, uh, just just so beautiful. He would inspire that I would actually cook uh, one time. I was cooking two times, three. Big, big preparations with the pot and cooking, uh, big quantities, and very nice. And he was, and I was singing, which I want to record actually this mantra, this type of, uh, huh? And, and I was singing and singing, and he was from his room. I could, I could know that he was hearing this song, this uh, tune that was. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. He was always inspiring this this tune to sing, to sing. But, and then he would always inspire this this big cooking big pot in Delhi in Chandigarh. He he liked this. He liked to give you know like bhakti through prasad. So there, by this Krishna Basana, this this. <laughs> Seva Briti, this Seva Briti, this tendency to serve, he has this power. Only only Vaishnavas, which are, have seen the perfection, have the power to give you this Shakti, this energy of, of Seva Briti, that you have the tendency, you want to serve, and you want to clean, and you want to do all these things. You, they don't have to tell you, like, go do this. Like You immediately are inspired and, and start doing everything. This is the power of Vaishnav. Vaishnav. So then, in the in the Kartik month, the Niyam Seva regulated every day the Seva of singing this songs Ashtakala Lila Smaranam. At night it was very beautiful Maha Mantra, you know radicals and separation from Krishna. So all this very beautiful, all this very beautiful. Okay, now one hour went by so fast. So. Another time, we were, let me remember more, more beautiful things that he used to say. So many nice things. Okay, one time I was, like I was living in Puri because we, we were, we used to go to Puri and, and live there for months and months at a time in the Gurudev Smat, Gurudev So we were there and, and, and I was very sad that the, some devotees, which I was actually helping all these devotees for many years like you know providing uh, food and all these things cloth and tickets and everything for all the brahmacharis because the the Vaishnavas in India said you have to serve all the Vaishnavas you have to serve so I was serving serving for many years but then they were all like very mean to me sometimes so then I went to Maharaj and and I, I was crying and I was saying, Maharaj, you know, the people, I'm helping them and this and that, but they're so mean sometimes, and I don't want to serve these devotees anymore. I only want to serve Mahabhagavats. Now I'm only going to serve the Mahabhagavats. I don't want to serve, like, all devotees. And he said, no. He said, no. 
you should know that when we serve the devotees, Krishna is so pleased. He told me, Krishna gets very pleased. So we serve the devotees because this gives pleasure to Krishna. This actually gives pleasure to Krishna. So then he said, I, when I was younger, I used to serve and go to all the Gaudiya Mats. Every Gaudiya Mat I would go and serve. Then I would go to another Gaudiya Mat and serve and another. And everybody knows me in all Gaudiya Mats because I have gone there and served, he said. And he said, even they would like call a rickshaw and pay for it for me to go because they were so pleased with my service. Like he was, he said like that. And then he said that one time there was one man that didn't, that didn't like him. And I said, Maharaj, how can you have enemies? You're such a wonderful person who could not like you. And he said, yeah, there was this person that didn't like me. He was very rich and he was very sick and he was in the hospital, but he couldn't even be admitted because he was so sick. He couldn't even sign. So he actually, he asked me, I went and I helped him and I signed and I did everything for him and I paid and I did everything for him to get cured. So then he said that after that, this man was so indebted to him. He was so pleased with his service, although he had been against him and criticized him but he was so impressed by by his attitude of not feeling personal uh, personal being hurt or rejected him because he criticized him but rather he went and helped him that he said he said that even the man when he recovered he wanted to give him a mat like a property and he said no I'm not doing this to get anything from him. And then he said, Pranam. So he said, he, sh he told me this story. He said, so one should serve and be helpful to the devotees, not expecting anything and doing it only because Krishna becomes very pleased. So this was a very, very beautiful teaching, very beautiful teaching. Because sometimes we hesitate, should we serve this, we serve that? No, serve everyone. All the devotees, no matter what level, what quality, what if they're against, if they're not, if they criticize you, everybody serve. And there's another very beautiful example that he, he would tell, which was, this example was, uh, he, he, he said that, that there was one Vaishnava, God brother of his Guru Dev that this Vaishnava, very, very high elevated Vaishnava, but he was, when he went to see him, he would like talk a little bit bad about his Guru Dev, like Bhakti Dayata Goswami Maharaj. So he felt like very bad in his heart. Anyhow, he was, he was very sick and he was very old and, and he was in the hospital. So, so Bhakti Dayata Goswami Maharaj sent him to go and take care of him. So they were taking care of him and you know, he needed care in the hospital. So he was taking care of him. I don't know if he was alone with somebody else, but then he was speaking ill. He was speaking bad about his Guru Dev, about his own Guru Dev, about the Guru Dev of Bhakti Bhagyan Bharati Goswami. So he felt really bad. And he wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to his Guru Dev, Bhakti Aitam Mala Goswami Maharaj, and he said, really, you know, I, I'm doing this service, but I feel really bad because he's criticizing you and he's saying all these things. And I, 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 I feel really bad. And then he didn't answer. His Guru Dev never answered anything about that matter. Nothing. He said, he answered saying, I would be so pleased if you serve this Vaishnava. And then Maharaj said that at that moment in his heart, came this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, which was, this verse said, this verse said, this verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita was, he who has served 
my guru is the object of my service. Very strong. He who has served my guru is the object of my service. So he realized, and he started crying, Maharaj started crying, because he realized that this is really the embodiment, like his guru, Bhakti Dayata Madhava Goswami Maharaj, was embodying all the, t embodying the teachings of Chaitanya Charitamrita. He wasn't taking any personal revenge, violence, uh, ben vengeance, none of this. He was thinking, he has served so much my guru, so he is the object of my service. So th these are the teachings of, of, of Maharaj that we think, wow, he, was, he told me, he said, I used to do so much service when I was like younger. There was never a time that he was lazy. He was never lazy. He was always doing service and hard work and hard work and carrying cement bags. And, and one time a cement bag fell on him, so he had to stop. He couldn't continue uh, doing the service. But anyhow, after like a month or two, he continued doing, although he was not supposed to. He said that the parikram that they used to do, like Braj Mandala Parikama, that they used to do it like with, with camps, like camping one place, then going parikrama, walking, camping in another place, and like this on and on and on. All the Braj Mandala Parikama, he was like the one that was like in charge of everything. And then he said that even he would have to stay awake all night to to watch that the thieves would not come and, 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 and rob like the pilgrims. And they would do like camping, camping all month. Braj Mandala Parikama really austere, like camps, not like hostels like nowadays and buildings, no. They would do like tents and, and everybody was sleeping there. And he said that he was like the one, he was the one that was in charge of all this Parikam, that, but when he stopped, nobody could continue it anymore. because. Nobody had this ability, actually, to, to organize and do all that. So he was like, so much, so much Samaka, never tired, always doing, doing, doing. And then he said, but nowadays, he told me, in Puri we were, nowadays, look, such big rooms, so, so much facilities for all the brahmacharis that, like they do. Nobody is... So much facilities means nobody is actually doing so much because there's so much, all these facilities are not that good. And then he told me this story, very nice story about my Gurudev, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. He told me that how much like love and affection and respect, you know, Vaishnavas have amongst each other. But now, my God, when I see that the way that people interact, even amongst our supposedly God brothers and God sisters, oh my God, I feel this is like Kali Juga to the max. They're always trying to dishonor and discredit and wow, it's like demon, demon nature really. Nothing to do with what I've seen, what I personally saw, the in exchange of Vaishnavas. Srila Bhakti Bikin Bharati Goswami Maharaj, he said that one time they were in, was it Haridwar or Rishikesh? Haridwar or Rishikesh, one of those two up in the Himalaya, they were there. And then Gurudev was going to come to uh, Puri. So then he so humble, Gurudev, that he said he had to leave. He left before uh, Bharati Maharaj, Paramapujapad. He left before to come to Puri, so that he could arrange, so that Maharaj could stay in his room, my Maharaj, my Gurudev, he could stay in his room, and he arranged everything, because if he would have known, if they would have traveled together, he would have never ever accepted that Maharaj gave him his room, he would have never accepted. So then, what he did, he actually came before, so he could get out and arrange everything for Maharaj to come and stay. So just see how beautiful the, the Vaishnavas honor and respect and serve each other. It's amazing. How beautiful. Then he told me another story. He said another story about how the etiquette of Srila Gurudev was so wonderful. For example, he said that 
one time in Navadip, I think Devananda Guriamat, they were, Gurudev was there, they had a, like a festival, and Gurudev was serving prasadam to everybody that came for hours. He was serving prasadam, serving prasadam to everyone. And then he wanted to serve prasad for Bharati Maharaj, but he said, Bharati Maharaj said, no, no, I'll wait for you. I'll wait, but I'm, I still have to serve, no problem. I'll sit here and wait until you, you know, finish serving. So he was serving and serving, and when finally everybody was served, then they sat together to take prasadam. And finally they were taking prasadam, and somebody came. And Maharaj, Gurudev, he stood up and he said, please, take prasadam. And he went, washed his mouth, hands, and start serving prasad to this person. So he said, how beautiful the etiquette of the Vaishnavas, always serving, serving, you know, Nowadays, I've seen, because I, live in, I lived so many years in, in Goryamat, in India, Keshwari Goryamat especially, and there's where I was strongly trained. This is finished. It's not going to be like that ever again. It's over. <laughs> At that time, it was the mood that you should not eat until everybody has finished eating. And then, when everybody has finished eating, then you sit and take prasad alone, meditating deeply, serving Radha Krishna, serving Gora, Nita, Panchatattva, all this internally. So, but now, one time I was given the, the opportunity to serve Prashadam, to be in charge of serving the Prashadam in Navadip Parikama, Navadip. There was like 1,000 people coming every day for Westerns. And there I had buckets and I had, like, my helpers would go and distribute prasadam to the lines of people, first rice, first, first the leaf, then the water, then the salt, then the chili, then the rice, and like this. But, and I had little pots, then I kept for the servants, then I, I would serve them. Once they have served, sit down and take prasadam. But then, and then I left a little bit for me. But sometimes at the very end, at the very, very end, when I was very, uh, you know, at the very end, there was a little bit left, and, and I, it was my turn after midnight, all day service, then it was midnight, 11 at night. Okay, I will sit now. Somebody would come in. Oh, is there any prasadam left? Is there any? And I said, okay, okay, sit. And then I would give him that prasadam. And then I didn't have any prasadam, but I was so happy, and I didn't feel any hunger. So I told this to uh, one Vaishnava, very, very high, high Vaishnava. I said, you know, Maharaj, Prabhuji, uh, you know what? I'm actually, I, I, I didn't even have my food, and I gave it to others, and I didn't have, but I felt not hungry at all. And he said, oh, when you give even what's yours, he said, then, then you'll be, then you'll be servant. At this moment, then you're a real servant. He told. So very beautiful Maharaj showing like this. Remember in Chandigar, and it was uh, Anukut, you know, Governor Anukut. So at this time, we're following Chaturmasya, we're not even tomatoes. And this month, they follow this also. So they start actually, Kartik, not in full moon, but they start like three days before in, in, in Ekadashi. And they finish it in Ekadashi. Because this is a proper way, you can do it in Ekadashi or you can do it in Purnima, it's okay. Both are bona fide. So he, uh, there was prasadam from the Anakut. So then I came and I said, Maharaj, you know, but they're given tomatoes. No, uh, eggplant. I said, uh, you know, they're, they're given eggplant, but I'm doing chaturmasya and I'm not eating and, and this is eggplant. So I shouldn't, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't do this. So then at this moment, at this moment, it's really funny because I said, you know, I sh I'm doing the chaturmasya. I'm going to break it if I eat this uh, eggplant. And he said, we are also following, we're all following the, uh, we're all following the chaturmasya. We're not eating tomato. We're not eating eggplant. But in Anakut, oh, this is not eggplant. This is prashad, he said to me. He said, and in this day, we take all of Govardhan's prasad. So this is a very nice, you know, 
teaching from a Mahabhagava that on the day of on the day of um, of uh, on the day of Anakut, and if we especially if we are in Govardhan or with a Mahabhagava, you must take all this prasad, not thinking I'm going to break the Kadashin or the Chaturmasya. This is what he told me directly. So another teaching, very beautiful, one time, you know, when he would go sick, sick Leela, and he would go to the hospital, then I would go see him in Delhi. And I once went with one Russian girl, and she was asking, Maharaj, you know, but I'm Russian, so I cannot have this, um, I cannot get this prema, like I cannot, I, I'm Russian, how can we like, Indians are different, and he said, very beautiful, he said, from A to Z, all of the creation of Brahma, all which was created from Brahma, from an ant to a human, to all the living entities that were created from Brahma, they are all, they are all, what's the word? They're all fit. There was another word, but they're all fit to attain prema. He said, all are suitable. All the living entities created by Brahma, they will all have the capacity to taste prema. All. Know what to speak of Russian or Spanish or, he said, all can have prema. So this is very beautiful. And she was very happy after that. Very happy. And then he actually told me a verse. He said, oh, I'm so sick. And then he said, he told me a verse, but I can't, I can't remember it. Unfortunately, I cannot remember it. I really, fire on me, fire on me. I can't remember that verse that he told me. Another time I went to see him. Also, he was sick. There was no, no, Visitors, but anyhow, I'm so bogus. I went to see him just one second. At that time, I gave him my mala, and he chanted all my mala. Then he said, he only told me one thing. He said, to not glorify the Vaishnavas at their appearance and disappearance. Oh, this is Aparada. He told me like this. And he would always make emphasis that Prabhupada was asked by his uh, by his Paranguru Dev by uh, Jagannath Das Babaji. Jagannath Das Babaji asked Prabhupada Bhakti Sarvatakur, you should you should make a calendar so that we can know the uh, the what's the name? I forgot. So you could actually put all the Appearance day and disappearance day of the Vaishnavas and of course of Krishna, Mahaprabhu, all this, the Karashis. So then he said that if we remember and if we glorify the Vaishnavas and their appearance and disappearance, they said Maya goes very far away. This is very powerful. So he told me this instruction, only, only this, then I left. This is the only thing. You, uh, you have to glorify Vaishnavas at the time of appearance and disappearance, he said, otherwise it is aparad. So, this is one very important, you know, instruction to follow from him. And another time I went to see him, he, this is in Faridabad, very beautiful teachings always. So I would go, when I wouldn't see him, he, he, he showed me that it's not good to be with him always that it's good to go and then come back and see him and then the meeting is very beautiful. So then he was telling me, he told me, you should, he said, you should distribute it, distribute malas, harinam, all over. He said, but very quietly, secretly, like gopis. <laughs> he told me like this. So then at this time, this, this particular time that I went, he was, uh, I sang. Radhe Jaya Jaya Radhe Jaya Jaya Mata Vataite Gokula Taruni Mandala Bahite 
And he said, and after I, I sang, I, I'm thinking, oh, I sang very nice. <laughs> this is the real mercy of the Vaishnavas. You see, the real mercy of the Vaishnavas, it's always cutting your, 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 your ego, always making you humble. Then immediately, what did he say? He said, he said, <laughs> after I actually, after I actually sang, he said, oh, you should, one should sing being very humble. One should be very humble when one sings. And I'm like, okay. But you know, I'm telling you, really, when the Vaishnavas chastise you, correct you, this is the real mercy. When they're praising you and this and that, oh, this is cheating. Gurudev used to tell us like this. When, when Gurudev is, oh yeah, come sit, oh, very nice. Giving all this honor and respect, oh, she's very good, he's very wonderful. Gurudev said, this is cheating. Real cheating. Real mercy of Guru, they're always heavy, heavier than God. So Maharaj, in this day, after, then he, he spoke this beautiful kata, but he knew because I told him, I only want Raslila. So he would always give him little hints of Raslila. For example, this time he said, very beautiful, he said, he said, um, he said, when, you know, this verse, Jan Maria Sarya to Itra Tashta Tashtra Sura Tene Brahma Hrijaya Adika Maya Buihan Tish Jat Suraya Tejo Vani Miriam Jata Jatra Tisargam Nisha Dhamna Sena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satam Param Dimahi. This first verse of Bhagavatam, which is so wonderful. This first verse of Bhagavatam, which is so wonderful. This verse is a he, uh, Maharaj, imagine how beautiful he was explaining actually because we have always heard from Guru Dev that in time of Rasa Lila uh, it is Radhika who goes and leaves Rasa Lila and Krishna follows her behind. This is like our the mood of our Gaudiya Vaishnavas. This is the mood that Guru Dev taught us. This is the mood that Bhakti Nautakut speaks and it seems that this is the mood that all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas also speak. Why? Because it, it's like this. Maharaj said that very interesting, very beautiful, very interesting. Jan Madhya, for those who know, like this verses, the first verse of Bhagavatam, which Guru Dev says it's actually describing the Salila. Every single verse. Vyasadeva is absorbed and he sees Satyam Paranti Mahi and meditate in the Supreme Truth, which is actually Radhakrishna conjugal or Shima Jaradika is the Supreme Truth. So, but this verse is describing Ras Lila. Every single word is a description of Ras Lila. So it was very beautiful because Srila Gurudev, I mean, Bhakti, Bhakti Bhikyam Bharati Goswami Maharaj, he said, if, look how beautiful it says, whoever will hear, but I'm, I'm doing this for the glorification of Bara, uh, Maharaj, for my heart's purification, for all the little insects and ants that are here, they might, you know, hear a little bit of the glorification of this great Vaishnava. So Maharaj said, Janmadi asya itaratash and chartasyu. So itaratash, chartasyu means directly and indirectly. That's the meaning. So in the general meaning, it's Krishna is the supreme absolute truth and he's directly in charge. He's indirectly in charge of the material creation, but he's directly and indirectly like this. But it is, in, in, in Guru Dev says it is Radharani, that she is directly present in Rasa Lila and indirectly is when she leaves Rasa Lila. This is the explanation that gives Srila Guru Dev. But Bhakti Vigyambharati Goswami Maharaj, very beautiful, he said that, Jan Maria said, Itaratash Chartasyu. The Itaratash means, and Chartasyu, I don't remember which way is which, but it means that Radhika leaves and that Krishna is running behind. That running behind, this is the meaning of Itaratash and Chartasyu. This is the meaning. Directly and indirectly. Radhika leaves and Krishna is running after her, running after her. So I was like, wow, I love it, you know. I see him and every time one little drop of some amazing Harikata. Very, very high, very little enough 
it's so high that only one minute it's enough you know because it's so high so beautiful so and another time the last I want to say something that when we were in for example we were in uh, Chandigarh the last like year before he left I went there he, he attracted me by his mercy and he actually gave me something that I have asked him that I said the only thing I want is this and he actually gave me this that time because he said that a guru a real guru or a Vaishnava uh, the disciple has to do everything that the guru says he must have the he must have the capacity that whatever the guru tells him he will do this is not only having the Mahabhagava guru but having the very qualified disciple that surrenders completely to Guru. If you surrender 2%, then Krishna will give you 2% mercy. If, Guru is the same. If you surrender 4%, then Guru will give you 4%. If you give 10%, he will give you 10 You surrender 50 he will give If you surrender your heart and soul, everything, Gurudev, I'm yours, I'm yours. Use me as an instrument for your service. Absolutely, this mood, then what happens? Then Guru gives you your, his own heart. Srila Gurudev used to tell like this. He gives tattas, all his knowledge, everything he will give. But you have to surrender like that to him first. So in this way, Bharati Maharaj, uh, why, why am I saying this? Oh, because Guru Maharaj said, Bharati Maharaj, Parama Puja Paz, Bharati Goswami Maharaj said that he said, like, Guru, like, the, the disciple should have to do anything that the Guru says. Maharaj would say. He has to do everything. He has to be obedient, not even doubt, at once. But the Guru, but, but, the Guru has to have that level. The Guru has to be in that platform that can fulfill all the spiritual desires of the disciple. All. This is the, the real way it should be Guru and disciple. The, the disciple has to be completely obedient, but the Guru has to be in that level, that whatever the spiritual desire, in, at once the Guru of Vaishnava fulfills it in the heart. This is, this is important. So this is, this was Bharati Maharaj, Parama Puja Pad. This was his, power. He knew any little desire you told, he never forgot and he would fulfill. Because this is the mercy of, of Guru Vaishnavas. So one time I was in Chandigarh. This is the last thing I will say. And he actually, he told me again, he said, have you been preaching? And I'm like, oh Maharaj. He says, why not? You're so qualified. At the beginning, the first meeting, he said, you will not be successful. This was the first meeting I had in, in Bhatinda, in this temple in Bhatinda, in Punjab, when I was alone with him, going every day to hear Harikata, alone, in his room for one hour, daily, for a week. And he, he said, but you will not be successful. But now, at the very end of his, before leaving this world, and what was it? I don't know how many years ago it was. He was telling... Are you not preaching? Why are you not preaching? And by his mystic power, he would arrange people to come immediately and invite me to their countries and give me the money for the ticket at once. This is the power of Maharaj. So he's, I asked him this question. I said, Maharaj, how is it possible? How is it possible that in the four Sampradayas, you know, there's like Sri Sampradaya, Ruda Sampradaya, Nimbarka Sampradaya and Madhva Sampradaya. This four Sampradayas. But there's one that is Nimbarka. And I said, Nimbarka Sampradaya, they're worshipping Radha and Krishna. They have deities of Radha and Krishna. They're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, all day and all night. They are riding Radha Radha in their bodies. They're chanting Jap. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, there's three kirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Jai Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Shri Radhe. They're always absorbed in Radha and Krishna, singing and dancing and 
Everything is Radha and Krishna. So how is it possible then that how is it possible then that although they are all day and all night worshiping Radha Krishna, their goal, their destination will not be the service of Shri Shri Radha Krishna, but rather the service of Dorkadish Krishna and Rukmini or Satyavama. How is this possible, Maharaj? How is this possible? And he said to me, he said, because the services that the Manjaris do in Radha Kunda at midday, oh, they don't do those services. Therefore, they cannot attain Radha and Krishna. That's what he told me. So, the meaning is, unless you enter into Raga Marg, the path of Raga Nuga Bhakti, then in meditation in Ashtya Kalya Lila Smaran, if we don't do the Ashtya Kalya Lila Smaran at during the time of the day, and those services that the Mandaris are doing there, we practice and meditate on those, we can never attain Radha and Krishna. See how amazing. I know preachers, gurus for 30, 40 years that are saying, no, this Radha Nuga Bhakti is too high, we cannot follow. Imagine, this is crazy. Another time in the Godimat where he stayed, I went to Calcutta. I stayed two weeks there. Two weeks there. We went, in this mud is amazing. This this temple of, there was staying Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Valavachita Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Toriyashami Goswami Maharaj. All these Mahavagavats were staying there. And the mood was so deep, so great. That just entering. You don't have to go and talk like, you know, Westerns are so like external, everything. We have to go and talk to the person, but there everything's so subtle. They're just entering. Just entering and sitting in a room <laughs> without even seeing the Vaishnava. They give you mercy and Shakti so that you can sit and fix your mind for hours and hours and hours. You fix your mind in meditating in Radha and Krishna. I remember the first time I went to this mat, I was in the room, in a, in a little, like, in a little, like, mattress on the floor, like, there's nothing. But you were, and, 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 the, and the song that was, I was inspired to open, Basati uh, Manohara, Nanda, Basati Manohara, Nanda Gopal, what is it? There are two. One is about Radha and one is about Krishna. Murati Manohara Madana Gopal Tara na 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 Basati Mano Nanda I can't remember but this one was coming like this mood, this song in my heart and I was singing and singing and, and just over and over meditating Krishna Krishna Radha is like crazy. <laughs> this is the, the hypnotism of the Vaishnavas that they make you hypnotize on Krishna and Radha, they fix your mind in Radha Krishna. This is, this is, this is Sadhu Sangha. This is real Sadhu Sangha. This is the, the, re, the real Sadhu Sangha. That you're absorbed in just chanting and remembering Radha Krishna. Your mind is not going here and there. It's fixed in the lotus feet and the lotus face of Shimitaradika. This is Sadhu Sangha in this temple. So anyway, this time, uh, Maharaj, at the time of Ekadashi, he was happy if we could do Nirjal, and he would go, and then he would give me the grains of Jagannath, Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Prashad. This is the grains, the dry, this is the way to break the Ekadashi, with the grains of Jagannath Prashad. And uh, very beautiful, very beautiful, all these things, but I think I spoke too much now. In this mat, the mood is very, very deep. Everybody's absorbed there doing bhajan, chanting one lakh, two. And it just, I have, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that being such a low, 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 low class, low class, 
person being born in such an asuric environment where you know everything was very inauspicious you know eating meat and drinking smoking all these bad things I was born into this but anyhow and I degraded myself so much because of the bad association in, in, in my youth but Vaishnavas are so wonderful just, they're just so merciful how merciful they are that they can actually take you out of this stool like well of family life and just take you out of this well of stool of all these attachments mundane attachments sense gratification just take it out no no this person is so fallen so fallen let me give mercy to him oh Maharaj also I want to remember just two more things two last that I remember him saying that you know he was saying he would he was telling me the story about Jagai and Madai talking about being so low, so fallen, have done so many sinful activities, so many, so many sinful activities over the years, decades. And what happens that he was explaining about Jagai and Madai, that he was so sinful, they were so sinful, they they would drink, they were drunks, and they were everybody was scared of them. Like nobody would go out of their houses because they were so afraid of meeting them on the street. They were very aggressive and violent and rape women. Very bad. Very they were very degraded. Although they were born in Brahmin families. He said, but when when they got the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, and Nityananda Prabhu, he said, they became very high class Vaishnavas and they were chanting two lakhs daily and he said and they became acharyas he said this is the mercy of the line of Mahaprabhu Srila Gurudev also used to say that the great mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was that Krishna in his past incarnation he would kill demons and in the pre in the next life he will liberate them Next life, liberated. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this life, in this life, he kills the demoniac nature in our hearts and establishes us as Vaishnavas. So this is in the same life. This is the glory of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is what, what I see that Bharati Maharaj he was, one time he was again sick in, in Faridabad, so I went to visit him. And he said, oh, I'm very weak. He said, I'm very weak. I don't feel very well. And then I, I, I asked him, Maharaj, why is it that, why is it that, you know, it is said that the goldsmith, people, the one that work with the gold, are, are considered very sinful. I said, why is this? And he, Guru Dev used to also say that they're very greedy, so greedy, they would even sell gold to their own mother. And that Brahmins don't ever go to their houses or even take donations from them because they're considered so sinful. And I was thinking, why the sinful? Maharaj told me, because in the Bhagavatam is described that it's a very great sin to to mix gold with another metal that fusion of those two metals is a very great sin so in this way then Maharaj he's such a great personality he is so high and his kata I translated now his whole book Vishuddha Chittanevani into Spanish since two or three years, but I, I'm very slow on, on doing the um, layout. But I want to finish it. This year, I should actually publish it without doubt. So, so much teachings, such amazing teachings are there in this book of Vishuddha Chaitanya Bani that I think that everybody who is sincere about bhakti, anybody who really wants Shuddha Bhakti, who wants Uttama Bhakti should read this book 
because this book actually explains the real standards of the Vaishnavas. He told, he told directly, he said that Bhakti, Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta Bhaman Goswami Maharaj told him that now the teachings are being watered down and down and down. All the teachings of Prabhupada, Saraswati Thakur. What to speak? That was how many years ago? 50, 40, 30? Now imagine now. Every time more and more and more. This is being washed down, down. So one should read this book because there one understands what is the real standard of the Vaishnavas. Very, very elevated, very wonderful. So today I want to I want to pray for Parati Maharaj to forgive me for all my offenses, to forgive me for all my shortcomings, for anything that I did wrong. And, and I pray, I pray for his mercy. I pray for his grace. I pray for his guidance. I pray that he's always present. He's in my altar. He's in my heart. But please help me help me follow bhakti purely give me strength please help me help us all help us all uh, advance spiritually and especially to be very humble to be able to propagate the mission the bishuddha chaitanya bani the spotless and faultless teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Panchakalpataravesha Kripa Sindhu Veva Chapatita Nampa Vanyu Paishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Gaura Premanande Hari Hari